um, we'll kick off with apologies, and as well as the ones on the sheet, we have apologies also from Richard, um, from Councillor Thompson, from Councillor Staines, and from Councillor Ventus. Right. So I will move that all five of those apologies be accepted. Sorry. Yes, sorry, plus Councillor Calvin and Councillor Lord as on the order paper. Move. Seconded, Councillor Peck, thank you. All those in favour? Aye. Aye. And against? That's carried. Confirmation of the agenda. Any one got two problems with that? If not, I will move. Seconded, Councillor Peck. Um, all those in favour? Aye. Against? That's carried. Declaration of interest, just for noting. And we move on to number four, which is the Otago Museum quarterly report. Ian's on, Ian's on leave this week. Okay. So we'll right. Right. Well, given that, um, I'll move. Thank you, Councillor Wilson. Second, Councillor Hawkins. The debate. Um, if it's not, I will. Sorry. No. I, I will. I will move that. Um, or sorry, I will put the motion, which is that the report be noted. All those in favour? Aye. Item 5, the minutes of the tour to set this museum board. Thank you. Move to Councillor Gazette, seconding Councillor Hawkins. Any debate on that? If not, I will put the motion. All those in favour? Aye. Aye. That's carried. Item 6, the minutes of the grants subcommittee. I move. Thank you, Councillor Wilson. Seconded Councillor Hawkins. Um, any debate on that? If not, I will put the motion. All those in favour? Aye. Aye. Yes. That's carried. Item 7, the, the Dunedin Hospital Therapeutic Pool Trust. And we have Pauline here. Respect to that. And as well as taking any comments that Pauline would like to make. Um, I understand that the Mayor and the Chief Executive have had a meeting this morning as well, which we might like to hear any, um, any well, comments and update from. In the first instance, Pauline, is there anything that you would like to highlight in your report? Um, no, I think um, the report speaks for itself and um, we've had conversations this morning as well. Sorry, it's getting my bad voice. <laughs> um, no, I think the report speaks for itself. Um, there are some proposals in there, but there are some additional ideas as well, which could go with that as well, which look really nice as well. Yeah. Okay, super. Um, you wish it, would you like to just give an overview of the next Yes, system? and uh, thank you. Um, and I'll, um, the Chief Executive might like to add to what I'm going to say. Um, all in all, the, the meeting this morning was uh, held at the request of the DHP. Um, it included the um, Chair of the Trust and the Chief Executive and myself. Uh, and the bottom, what came out of it was that um, what we already know, that is the DHB cannot afford to keep the pool open and all closed. That's a given. Um, but in terms of what is required to keep it open, there are a whole number of unknowns. Some of those are capital requirements, in other words, until a recent, reasonable series of investigations is done, mechanical, structural, electrical, uh, it's not clear what the quantum of capital required to maintain, to bring the pool up to uh, the standard required would be. There are a lot of operational variables uh, and the, the report that we have mentions the possibility of such things as double glazing and energy saving uh, <coughs> measures. It's not clear, and that's not anyone's fault, it's just not clear yet what the return on that investment might be. In other words, if you put in double glazing, what energy savings would you make and what difference would that make to uh, operational revenue? Um, and the other thing that is certain, though, is that it's a very short time frame in which to resolve some of these issues. So the bottom line was that the issue is not about raising the capital to fix or whatever it needs to be done to the therapeutic pool, the money that is required at the moment is to investigate those questions. Uh, and that, that, um, 
that is about considered to be about um, perhaps fifty thousand dollars, and we can't know what capital needs there will be until that investigation has been done. So I have um, I have a motion a resolution to put that would address that, um, and I'm happy to do it in whatever order you, you if you want me to put it and then use it as a space for discussion. I'm happy to do that. Mm -hmm. Well, I think. Possibly if we can give up, that might be a good idea. Okay. So, the um, In the first instance, shall we take questions, either of Pauline or of the Mayor and the Chief of Seat? I don't So, do you have anything additional that you would like to add from this morning's meeting? Or um, I, I think the only thing would be that the Call Trust have raised the 50,000 dollars that's referred to in the report for um, operation of the pool through until the end of June next year. So between the DHB and the pool trust, they can keep the pool operating. Um, so as the Mayor says, that means that the short pool is getting out to do the investigative work, and then that determines the level of fundraising that would be required to do as a community in order to keep the pool so that it has another 70 years of life. Okay, super. And I should have also welcomed representatives from the pool trust here. Are you guys available to answer any questions? Should councillors have questions about from the pool trust perspective? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so I'll, I'll throw out some questions. Councillor Mitzko, do you have a question? <coughs> yes, yeah, a question. Yeah. Um, or a number of them. Um, I, and like a, another, a number of other councillors, I'm familiar with the pool and uh, am a pretty regular user, although not as regular as some. Um, but uh, I, over the years I've watched the developments around the pool and I consider it a, a really valuable facility and complement the work of the trust and the people who are present and their, and their predecessors. But it seems to me that there's an issue here, a pretty obvious issue, of one local authority, of one kind or another, um, passing over a responsibility to no one or someone else to pick up. And I'm wondering what, if we have any information about why the investigative work that one would have thought would have been done before a, a letter of the sort that's currently on the notice board of the pool was sent hasn't been done by the current operator or the current owner. Uh, and that while I'm certainly supportive of what the Mayor is foreshadowing, um, I'm wondering why we're picking up this baby or expected to pick up this baby when other people haven't done even the preparatory wiping. Well, <laughs> um, I, I guess perhaps I don't really feel in a, in a position to answer that, but the Chief well, Executive Minister yeah, may be able to offer some comment on the reasons why the SDHB have not done this work, or the Trust may wish to come forward and offer some thoughts on that. Tony? Um, Assuming the discussions we've had with the DHB, they did a report, um, had a report done that talked about a million dollar figure for capital upgrading. Um, it had a large uh, number of unknowns as part of that report though. Uh, when we've looked through the report, uh, we have queried whether all of that million dollars would actually be spent or required. Um, and soon to our investigation, we can edit, um, assuming that there was some role for this council, uh, we sat down and said, what, the th what were the questions that would need to have answered before someone decided to take over the pool for another 50, 70 years? And those are the questions that we came up with. And the, and the integrity of the tank and the building are key ones. But the report in, um, I have from the trust itself um, did identify a number of other things that were needing um, upgrading. And I think from discussion with the DHB, they were clear around not wanting to spend more capital on a facility, um, given their current financial state. So in my sense, they took it to a point and said, this is not feasible from their point of view. Um, and then we've taken a little bit further and said, so if someone else was to take responsibility, what were the questions we'd need to have answered before making a decision for the future? Well, can I just follow up on that? Um, I'll spare you the speech about, uh, the political speech about health funding, but um, the, you've just told us that the, the DHB um, have, uh, are in a difficult financial position. We know that because of discussions about the rebuild of, of the clinical services block and the rest of it. Um, I don't re recall this authority um, recently um, shouting from the rooftops how strong this financial position was, apart from the performance. 
and I just I find there's an inherent contradiction in trying to achieve a desirable goal, uh, but rolling over um, to an authority who is, in my view, if it wants to, sh to share this responsibility, ducking what is a perfectly justifiable health associated community <laughs> advantage uh, that it should be shouldering. Is that a question? <laughs> might not be. Might, might be when you go to the ballot box, don't I? <laughs> okay, well that's... Yeah, that's the issue behind it, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. <clears throat> I hear, I hear your concerns and I think maybe it is more of a matter for debate unless you have a specific question. That I'll raise it again later. Okay. Does the Trust have any perspectives that would you like to offer? I mean, I don't want to draw you into discussion or debate, but if you have got um, perspectives that you think the Trust would like to put on the table, then we welcome you to do so. To address uh, Councillor Benson Pope's uh, question, it is a political issue. Um, the SDHB board has set an uncertain terms that it will not fund beyond December 2014. Uh, the Trust has secured funding for operational costs to June 2015 in an effort to be able to address the issues of feasibility study for the rights of infrastructure and, and to raise funds for the, the capital upgrade that may be required. Can I ask a question? You, you can ask a question. Thank you. Um, are you aware of the, um, this issue has actually been discussed at the, the level of the, uh, the District Health Board membership, or has this been entirely a management decision? Uh, this has gone before the board itself, and the decision was made by the board in May this year, communicated to the trust and provided. Thank you. Can just clarify? The meeting today was with the chair of the board and chief executive. Okay, further questions? Councillor Paul, you can Has the district health board currently right, prepared to give you a long term lease on this before we start an investigation? Subject to? That has been discussed and it is very likely, should the board remain open, there will be a lease available. Yeah, how long? Because I don't know how here in the um, direction that um, if one party gets it, you look at an upgrade in the hospital, so there's a chance that could go, or you can get a long term lease before you spend your money. Uh, according to the chairman of the SDHB board, a lease would, would be offered, and indications are likely around 15 years. But it's really a discussion of the detail that will take place later. Yeah, well, it's, you know, I think that needs to be taken before we start spending any money on doing upgrading or even a feasibility upgrading. We need to make sure that before we spend any money, we have got an assurance that we're going to have it for the next number of years. Councillor Thank you, Madam Chair. Just a, uh, just a clarification on the cost of uh, investigative work. Um, and I'll see we're up to 50,000, the report talks of 20 to 40,000. Is, is, uh, is, is there a more definite figure? Um, no, there's not. That's why it's up to. Okay. Councillor Hawkins. Uh, thank you. My question is around capacity of the facility as it is now. Um, how much room is there, even given the current operational windows, for that to grow given um, the popularity of it among the 65 and over demographic, which is a demographic that is only going to grow um, in the short to mid term. And we talk about you know, having it as a facility for another 70 years, but is it possible that the demand will outgrow the space within that time horizon. Madam Chair, the, a, health, a healthy number or a safe number of uh, emissions would be around 50,000 per annum. Currently it's around 35,000 per annum. So there is capacity to lift it to the same level and that in turn would increase revenue. Councillor Wiley. Thank you. Um, Pauline, um, how does the physio pool compare to the synthetic pool, uh, soccer pool? 
in terms of numbers, temperature, cost to run? Um, the cost to run, I can't give you a clear answer on that, just straight from the book. Um, the numbers are a bit above, or more towards the 40 to 45,000 in, in a six month period. Um, so that's, that's higher. Um, the temperature is 32 degrees, which is 2 degrees lower. Um, and that's 32 degrees the one as well in the leisure pool. And the other pools are 28, um, so that's for the... When it comes to financials, I don't think it's very easy to, to compare because of the management of the physio pool is different to the management that we have at the Aquatic Centre. Um, Especially because we have a larger overhead, but also because we have a different um, approach to lifeguarding, training around that, and uh, you know, opening hours, it's only six months, and those kinds of things. So it's hard to compare. But it should, but a, but a physio pool, if you put the numbers together and with just your normal financial brain, you should be able to find out where your best uh, point is, which uh, just been pointed out to be around 50,000, which sounds quite sensible. But it also depends on how high the number of admission is and how much, how many people get a kind of concession rate, a, a lower rate because they have medical certificates or in other ways, and how you deal with that. There's also the aspect of using it more professionally, so by physiotherapists, and those are some ideas that you could put forward in this case, which could make, could possibly give a boost to numbers. But yeah, the main issue is still the You've got to also open actually fund the capital that you're going to be putting into it to you know, make sure that everything is um, viable for the next at least 20 years. Okay. Yeah. Do you see a lot of positive overlaps with the staffing if it was going to, is there a call was going to come under the DCC slash trust? Of course, um, uh, we would be able to deal with that. We could, it, um, but it, it isn't something that we've been aiming for. Um, we also have a lot of other activities that we have to do to course and put our money in. Um, just you know, mentioning more skill and uh, the heating uh, situation. And our own uh, Moana is 50 years this year, so she's going to need some ex extra attention as well. Um, so that's, yeah, so it's possible. But as I said, the way the, pool, the trust manages the pool is different from the way we would manage, or we manage our pools. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Um, so, what your name? Yeah. 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 Sorry. Um, does the, uh, following up on Councillor Hall's question, is there any uh, suggestion of what the land site may be used for if they decide to close the pool? There's been no indication from the SDHD board about alternative land use certainly no pressure about that in terms of the reason for closing. Okay. Um, how long has the crack been in the hall? As long as I can remember and I've been swimming there for about 27 years. Yeah. Okay. Um, I've been uh, at several, well, many emails from uh, physiotherapists out of town and they all are really um, concerned about what are the alternative plans for therapy for their patients. Does that like place the pool with the pool? You know, yeah, there plans for another pool or something? Well, I'm not sure whether or not that's a question that the physio trust can answer. That may be more of a question that we would need to direct at the Southern District Health Board. I stand to be correct on that, people, and I'm sorry I didn't introduce by na by you by name. Everybody has been a physical mark. Who's the treasurer? Is that right? Secretary the treasurer. Trustee. Thank you of the trust. Um, well, then, can I just quickly comment on the crack? A crack doesn't mean something's wrong, no, but a yeah. crack can mean there's something wrong. And if we have some reasons to think that we really need to investigate that before we go any further. Yeah, I don't there are other signals which, which kind of you know, put us to that idea that we really need to investigate it. <coughs> yeah, and I understood the crack had been there for some time so, so. Um, okay. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut off the question, but I just think it's probably not fair to ask the trust that particular question, unless the trust has some insight to that. Well, it's a, it's a question which the trust has put to the SDMH board uh, and received a satisfactory answer at this stage. But if, for example, the board remains open, it's likely that the physiotherapist at the hospital would want to use the board for its patients, therefore, maybe the contribution revenue 
that's right. Yeah, I guess where I was going for my question is because the SDHB has to support therapy in some case. So if they're not giving the money to the Ball Trust, where would they be sending that money to assist the therapy? That's another question which the trust has put to the SDHB board. So if it's not using it for hydro therapy, it's going to have to spend some money yeah. somewhere else on other therapy. Yeah, there's so expenditure going out regardless. Yes. Yeah, thank you. Councillor Newman, and then Councillor Thanks, Madam Chair. My question's for Neville, and I assume that you are familiar with the, the motion that's up on it. It's probably not the first time you've seen it. Oh, okay. Well, my question's around the, the, the feasibility study. Essentially, that's, I think, what the 50k would be uh, spent on. There's a preliminary work being done, but obviously, a more in depth study is required. And I just wonder, from the trust point of view, um, are there any potential, or have you considered any potential funders of that that 50k? Obviously, other than the, the city providing a loan, but have you looked at the potential of sourcing funding from, i.e., internal affairs via lotteries for the feasibility study? Has that ever been a discussion by the trust? We have yet to have a discussion with the lotteries board, but that is likely funding source for the feasibility study, given that um, the DCC may prove the line. So essentially the 50 would be sort of a backup uh, to make up the shortfall, or however it pans out, if you are able to secure other funding. Well, I'd expect that if, if we could obtain funding for the study, then that loan would be clearly like to repay. Thank you. That's the Z. these resolutions to be passed, uh, but it's all about the money at this stage. Um, but what I'm concerned about, and it touches on the comment that uh, Councillor Benson Pope made before, and perhaps um, one of the others, um, with regards to um, the rationale for closing the board, the, the EDH, EHB, um, have they made any comments apart from funding? I mean, um, as Andrew alluded to before, the, um, the, there would have to be, in my view, um, very good reasons for closing the board, and it can't just be about the money. So uh, you've asked the question to them, have they replied in any way at all and, and, and given you any information? And, and if not, you know, do you intend to follow that through? Because if you don't, I think that we as a council should be asking what they're doing, because that, in my view, affects the long-term viability of the board as to what they may do in the future. I know it's a long winded question, but have you got any information back from them? Yes, I can answer the question. The SDHB board has made clear that it does not have the money. It's, it's clearly running a huge deficit. It's, it's not even meeting its budget. So the reality is that the SDHB board, the SDHB, does not have the money to go forward with retainment the board. So it's over to the trust or some alternative organisation to fund it and keep it going. So, question. so what are they saying to you though, it is only the money? If it wasn't the money, would they be closing? If it wasn't for the money, would they be closing the pool? That's the question I'm asking. Are there other reasons? I think it is only the money. So the fact that it was deferred maintenance or operating cost shortfalls is driving that. Yeah, so that, that defines the argument as far as I'm concerned because, you know, I would have thought there would be some other rationale behind it why they would want to close. In fact, you know, there might be some other way of them uh, being able to cater for the people who use the pool in some different format uh, rather than the, having the pool. But if it's just the money, then I'm interested in, in knowing that. Uh, a couple of questions. I just one of the mayor, and I'm just wondering, during this uh, presenting this motion, whether there's been any discussion with the RRC or any other councils um, for contributions, because this is a facility I understand that goes wider than just an even. No, um, but the issue was only brought to uh, me at a meeting this morning, mm -hmm. and to this um, meeting. Thank you. This meeting now, uh, so there hasn't been time um, to look around. And I, when I speak to the, 
motion, the issue will is it council is it is identified its money, but the other the other issue is time. Yeah. Okay. Appreciate that. Thank you. Um, I'm sorry, I've, cut, I've just agreed to skim my papers. Where did you get the 50000 that you've got at the moment to extend to June 2015? Sorry, you you, you've got, you said that you had funding 50000 I think, to keep you going until June 2015. Correct. Where did that come from? The Indigo Valley Sport and Charity Foundation. Very good. I, I don't think it was in here. I couldn't remember who it was. So there are, other, are potentially other trust, trusts available as well to help. Have you had... Discussions with community trusts. There are potential uh, <coughs> other trusts, uh, mainly for the capital expenditure. Right. Any further questions? Oh, sorry, one other. Having had a very small amount of time working on a local community report, I'm just wondering how certain you are that the feasibility report will be able to give us any assurance. Really, it's sometimes once you get in and do the work that the problems are found rather than feasibility and I mean I'm, it seems a lot of money to go into feasibility. Have you got any better idea of actually whether you actually have to get in and do the work and, and start commencing the work to find out the quantum of the problem? Well the purpose of a feasibility study is to get credibility to be able to fund us for money. We don't know what the outcome of the feasibility study is going to be. We have an indication that there are things that need done to that call, purely because it's 70 years old mm. and it's been a lack of capital put into bay the last 10 or 15 years. But until we have the study done, we don't know what the outcome is going to be. But at least it gives us a blueprint for moving forward with the plan and obtaining money to open. Mm. And just one question from me, um, Nibu. Um, the DCC Observer, which is suggested, might be an additional member of your board. Um, the trust is quite comfortable with that as an approach. I mean, noting the fairly significant voluntary hours that you guys have put in and <laughs> over the years, um, you're, you're quite comfortable. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Just quickly following up on my earlier question around capacity, that 50,000 figure, is that based on current opening hours? So should it be open Saturday afternoon, Sunday afternoons, that figure would be higher than that again. The, the pool is available to be used on Saturday and Sunday afternoon and often it's just hired out to special groups. So if it's, for example, Muslim women, um, the Orchard Sun Club, they'll use it outside of the normal public session. But overall, just to get a guide on this, 50,000 grand would be a safe number. Roughly how many, how often is it used on those Saturday and Sunday afternoons where it isn't open to the open to the public as such. I can't give you those details. Thank you. Councillors. Again, just understanding resolution three there. Um, I'm just wondering, is it financial skills you require or funding skills or both? Um, I mean, what do you think is lacking in your trust as opposed to necessary needs? Uh, I'm not sure that anything is particularly lacking, mm -hmm. but we, we welcome input from the DCC on in some way. Any uh, further questions? If not, you wish it, just to clarify, are you intending that these three um, resolutions be additional to the resolutions? in the report um, or look I've, I've just given um, Pam a contradictory uh, answer to that very question <coughs> I think they're probably in addition because um, there's nothing here that this precludes, this precludes. so I'm quite comfortable to move um, six um, parts the three of you and the three out there. And in terms of number two on the order paper, where it says providing OTPT <coughs> is able to fund the estimated 50k operating shortfall, um, I think we could probably change that to noting that OTP yep, has secured $50,000 to fund the operating shortfall. Okay. Um, 
about number three, is that still relevant? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Councillor Wilson. Actually, sorry, can I just ask a question of the CEO or Tony? Where is this money going to come from in the interim? Because presum presumably, maybe Albert's alone. I'm not quite sure how secure it would be. Um, and just understanding the ramifications for that, please. Uh, we're money in the, in, you know, for the operating costs of the council through to June next year, so it will be relatively easy for the resolution from yourselves to, to dip, in, dip, dip into one of those budgets and to let you know where, um, with the expectation that the full trust have, uh, have got some work that they're planning to fundraise in order to, in order to repay this cost. But I think in terms of time frame, uh, getting the investigation underway as soon as possible is but just to be um, a chance of getting really done in time to make decisions about both the fundraising and the ongoing funding for uh, the first of July next year. Um, but it's, it is a risk. Things come up during the year. Sometimes we do end up having to spend money on that we weren't necessarily expecting. And then, on the other hand, things that we were planning to spend money on that we sometimes don't end up doing. I have also just confirmed with the Governance Officer that this has come to us as a Part A. Um, the effect of these additional three motions is to make it a Part B, so this will go back to Council for final approval, at which point, should I imagine there be any concerns financially that are flagged up, we could, um, we could revisit it then. Councillor Zett. Um, we have, if anyone has a final question, then I'll, have, take those, then I'll hand over to the Mayor to make any introductory comments and then we'll be into debate. Final question, Councillor Whitehall. Um, Neville, can you let me know, is there any uh, physio pools operating around the country and how are they run? There are therapy pools through Redgrave, and many of And you know how many there are, roughly? I can't give you the numbers, but I do have access to a report which has surveyed the therapy of course in the That would be actually good to have at some time. Would the trust be able to provide that information? Make that available to the council. Super, thank you. Councillor Hawkins? Thank you. The pool that you referred to at Q in Invercargo, who funds that? It could be an MRI machine that our community feels we want the use of. So I think we've got to put that to one side. And I think that the, the focus on it as an aquatic facility has only been uh, emphasised, if you like, because probably it's been given responsibility for doing some of this. But the fact is it's a health facility. And council has no responsibility to run it, fund it, or do anything else with it. Uh, and, I, and nothing that I've put in, in these resolutions suggests that I, or foreshadows the idea that council should run it. Because I personally, that's up to council obviously in the longer run, but I personally don't think that would be the ideal outcome. Council just happens to be the organisation best placed at the moment to facilitate coordinating saving it. That's as simple as that. It seems to me there's a lot of interest groups and stakeholders in the community. Um, the ball's landed in our court and given the time frames, um, I, my suggestion is that we, we pick it up. Um, there is also um, interest in the community from various corporates, from the community trust, and a number of other interests who would be interested, perhaps, in um, contributing to the long-term capital funding of it. But we're in a catch-22 situation of not being able to identify the quantum of capital needed until we've spent other capital to do the investigation. And it's that capital and the time frame required 
to get on with that um, job that is the subject of these. That's all this is about. So I'm suggesting, initially when I um, was discussing this this morning, um, my first thought was an underwrite of the trust so that they could go out and get some money to fund the viability study. And I would point out to this, there's a, there's a distinction between, I specifically put viability in here, because that covers a range of issues. It's not a feasibility study of its operation, it's a viability study of every aspect of it, whether it's the structural integrity of the pool or whether it's um, whether you could um, make some savings through changing the glazing or whatever, it's, the, it's complete. Um, so my original intention was to suggest to council an underwrite, but it was very quickly pointed out to me that we don't have the time to say to the trust, you go and find the money and spend it, and if you can't find it, we'll, we'll back you up. We just simply don't have time for that, which is why I'm suggesting that the council um, put a bit of trust in the trust and loan them the money to get on and get this work done in the six month window of opportunity that they have enabled by raising money from the Bendigo Trust to keep it going for that period of time. So that is all that I am suggesting. And I, if there's anything to be foreshadowed, it is, it is that if the viability study is positive and from discussions with the DHB there's apparently no reason to believe that fixing up the pool is not manageable. What we don't know is what it will cost, but there's no reason to believe it's um, a, a cop case that it can't be fixed. We just need to know how much. So I um, feel that council is the uh, organisation of last resort, if you like, in this instance, given the very short time frame. And it's a relatively low risk for council to get behind the trust who have done so much over the years and support them in, the, in these six months as they investigate what has to be done to keep it going. Further speakers? Councillor Zip. Uh, I, I agree with Phil and you see it. Um, but I also think that um, what I'd like the council to, it might be a fourth uh, resolution, um, to, to meet with the um, district health board uh, to talk about the, the future of <coughs> going with the pool. Because, uh, as the mayor said, it, it's, it is just happening to be a pool, but it could be something else. And the people of Dunedin have raised uh, funds for the district health board uh, in the past for various um, activities, and um, I'm sure they'll do so again uh, with this one. But it might be a pool and it might be something else. So I think we should be engaging with the um, district health board to talk to them about uh, like, to me, it's the health board has looked at, at their funding and said, how can we save money? Let's drop the pool. It's an easy one to, 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 to cut out of the budget. It might be something else that they can do, and the pool might come back into the equation again, into their budget again. We should be looking at their budget, as Councillor Benson and Pope said before, by just handing this over to us or expecting someone to pick up on it. And I think the people of Dunedin will, because they want to retain it. But there's going to be some responsibility on the district health board as well. And what we're doing here is just saying, we'll do the work, we'll find out then what it's going to cost, and we'll come up with a figure. What are you guys going to do? And so I believe there's another um, resolution in there where we, the council should be talking with the district health board about this, the, the long-term viability of the pool or some other facility that they may be looking at cutting that we might be able to it may be better placed for the uh, the rate payers putting their funds towards rather than pool. So it's just it's just at an early stage engaging with the district health board on the future of the longevity, if you like, of the pool or other issues they might be looking to fund. Mm -hmm. Well, you might want to consider moving the amendment or something to that effect. I, I I think maybe what you're raising is a broader issue, which perhaps is additional to this, which is um, communication between DHB and perhaps myself as Chair CNE yep. to understand their budgetary implications going forward or something to that effect. I'm happy to do that, but I think I'm, I'm at the risk of getting into debate, but I think um, as I understand what you're suggesting, it is perhaps a broader issue than specifically this. I'm quite happy. I think these resolutions are fine, but, and it doesn't have to be we don't have to agree to meet with the uh, just our board today, but I think it's something we should be doing in the in the future. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's really important that we 
we get behind their thinking on why they decided just to cut the ball and not something else because it, there could be very well something else in there that, that you know that's that we should be looking at rather than the ball. How about you think about a consequential motion about dialogue between council and DHB on ongoing or something to that effect more than happy to take that? Or under members for notification to the chair. Further debate. Councillor Noon and Councillor Wilson. Thanks, Madam Chair. I, I support the Mayor's recommendations and I think just picking up on his point about this being a health service, clearly it is a, um, a well-used and wanted and respected health service and I think uh, it's good that the City is taking a lead and I th also think we should put a plug in for the Bendigo Foundation where they've actually helped us make this, hopefully this has passed, make the decision because they've also um, provided leadership and that gives us some confidence we're not on our own here. Uh, there is you know, wider community support. Thank you. Councillor Wilson. I'm going to support this motion, or these motions um, with a great deal of nervousness. I think I'm really concerned about us, A, getting into the health sector, B, um, the level of understanding um, of this grant, and it's not because it's not good works, it's really great Project, and I'd like to say thank you to the Trust for doing what they have done. I agree um, with Andrew, thanks to the Bendigo Trust for allowing us the opportunity to even consider this. But um, one of the issues are uh, when we do grants, even small ones, we require a huge understanding of the financial situation of the Trust. That, that's lacking here. I personally prefer another clause that the Trust's accounts be made public, um, or at least that, that, that of the 50000 that we're contributing, because there is no public... Um, I don't think your financial records are public, um, and would that, and that's a question, do you, do you mind if I ask a question through it? Would you mind if the Trust um, accounted for this money publicly? Uh, the Trust's financial records are public to the extent that they're submitted to the charity session. But I don't think there are, I couldn't find them online, and some some people do, some people don't. They're not online, but they'll right. be able to search the charity submission. Okay. I, I, it's just that openness and transparency that I think we owe our ratepayers to have. So whether we can have in there that um, that the funds will be accounted for back to council or in a report back to council or in the report back in the long term plan. Would you mind working yeah, some okay. purpose yeah. and, and seeking the mayor's the mayor's you don't mind that To be perfectly frank, um, I'll support this, but I'm really pissed off that it's even on our agenda. Um, for the SDHB to sort of want to palm something like this off is, um, and not take ownership, and for the benefits it brings to them and the status of the services they provide, I think is pretty ridiculous. Um, when we look around and look at people that use the pool on a regular basis, and then look at you know, the excellent surgical services we have in Dunedin, the medical school, you know, and how all these services go hand in hand, the school physiotherapy, you know, all that are part of the SDHB, all part of the, the graduate of health in Dunedin, they're actually why they would even be contemplating passing this off uh, in some form is just nuts to me. Um, you know, you've got orthopedic, neurological, respiratory, arthritis, stroke patients, yeah the elderly uh, and some young using it. You know, I've, I've been talking to one person quite frequently who's been using it since 1961. They've had nine surgical requirements and this has aided them to get them on their feet much quicker. So, in, and also, is there a way that ACC could be involved in some form? I'm not sure on that one. But the other thing that I find is for the, the information that we've received to date, $140,000 of you know, operating, maintaining plant energy and, and building. Well, from what I understand, the steam system already runs under the building. What do they want to do? They want to put a meter on it and tap it and say, oh, now it's going to be separate. Oh, we want to charge you this. You know, they're going to say, oh, by the way, you've got this piece of land, we want to charge you for this. I think the SDHB really need to come clean exactly on what's coming, coming out of this program. And, but I will support this on that basis. Madam Chair, yeah. um, 
just seems to me that we are in a situation where we are a lifeboat uh, for a much loved uh, public facility. And if it is a public thing, as I think raises its head above the water, so to speak. Um, because, as we've heard, uh, the pool, uh, the counterpart pool in Vicarral is funded um, yeah. by the District Health Board <coughs> funding. Uh, and perhaps because it's, uh, the ours is public, uh, it puts it in another category. I'd uh, just like to thank uh, the Trust, Neville, and, and your trustees for, uh, for the work you're doing to keep it afloat. And, um, and uh, I hope that, that our, uh, we, we have limited funds to be applying to a capital expenditure program there. Um, but I think uh, it, it is a facility worth, worth battling for and, uh, and thank you for what you do. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just, uh, sorry, um, just before you, um, I, I just thought suddenly maybe I should get Councillor Wilson. You've you've made some suggested changes, and just before the second speaks, um, I wanted you there. Have you? My understanding is it's now in the third one, saying at the end and on a breakdown of the loan fund spending. It's included now in number three. Okay, great. And we're at, at the Mayor's approval, but I'm not sure the seconder has approved apologies. So we will now hand over to the seconder to yes. speak to the motion, including the proposed... Yes, yes. yes. super. Thank you. No, that's not what I, what I wanted to say, though, but I do say yes. Um, <laughs> I, I, I sort of share this, the cynicism that others have already expressed, because this isn't the first time. The reason for the existence of the Otago Therapeutic Pool Trust is because a while ago they tried the same game. And I have to say, when I read the latest um, release in the ODT, it was, here we go again, and what do we find? Oh, well, the pool's in an unknown state because of deferred maintenance. Well, what a surprise that is. You know, so um, I, I agree absolutely with the, the comments um, that have been made about the decision-making process and what's sitting behind it. I think there is an issue around public funding that I'll spare you. Um, and you make your own decisions about that in due course, but there is a real issue around provision of facilities like this in all our communities. And it's great that the Invercargill people have a nice new therapeutic pool. Look, we're quite happy with a nice old one, actually. Um, and I, I, I want to reinforce what I said about the works of the Trust, the work of the Trust to keep the pool going, because it's only there now uh, because of the good efforts of the individuals involved over the years. So um, I'm I'm happy with the Mayor's uh, uh, motion as amended because I think it does facilitate possible resolution, but, but I don't think we should take the heat off the DHP itself or indeed the members from the Otago constituency who are easily identifiable on your websites um, to lobby them about their decision making or their acceptance of management decision making about this issue. Any further speakers? If not, I will just make a couple of words before we back over to the um, I would also like to reiterate um, Councillor Pete's thanks um, and Councillor Betsy Pope's acknowledgement of the enormous work that um, has gone in over multiple years by the Trust to retain this facility the way that it is. And I, um, one look when we went down there and, and had a look with, with you guys showed how much love and energy and time you've put in over multiple years and um, and so I think it's really important that we acknowledge that at this point. Um, I think the, the point that Councillor Noon made as well about the Bendigo Foundation is um, very valid because if they hadn't come forward and, and, and made that offer it would be much more difficult for us to be making this decision today. Um, I think Coming right back to one of the first points that was raised um, by Council Hall around the, um, the, 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 the use of the site and agreements about the site, I think um, the Mayor's additional motions and the, the framing around long-term viability will allow us to look into those issues and, and to have some fairly robust discussions with SCHB to ensure that any tenure is insured before capital expenditure is, um, is, is looked into. So I think that's, that's really positive. Um, I am slightly nervous that the Chair of the Finance Committee isn't here today to, um, to give us an opinion in terms of the financial implications of this, but I do note that it will go, be going back to Council and we will be able to have further discussions about it then. Um, I think
that the points that have been made around this being a health facility are really pertinent. Clearly it has, when you look at the breakdown from the trust, saying that 80% of the users are those over 65 or there with a um, medical certificate, it's, it says a lot about who this facility is used for and the reasons why it is important to our community. And I think um, on the back of that, there should be no... Um, we should be under... We should understand that what we are doing here is supporting the retention of a public health facility in our community, and that is really important, and I think the SCHB should be recognising that. But I, I do think that the, what the, the six points that we have in front of us will enable us to have some discussions with the District Health Board in that regard and ensure that we're all on the same page in terms of retaining this facility into the future. Um, Councillor Bazette's point about um, discussion with the CHB I think is a, also a really valid one and perhaps we need to be initiating some more regular dialogue with that board about their budgets and their, their decisions and the impact that they have on our community and I um, am happy to look into that um, uh, should that be raised either as a consequential motion or through matters of notification to the chair. Um, with that, hand back to you, Your Worship. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, can I just address, without wanting to put myself in the position where I'm defending the DHB, um, the understanding I received from the meeting this morning is that they have a finite amount of money and they can't borrow. We councils can borrow. Apparently, they're not in that position. Uh, and the Chair indicated that a priority coming forward was a new clinical services block. We know that they need surgical theatres up, the, the surgical theatre is upgraded. Uh, there's a whole host of things that the um, DHB has in front of it. I'm not saying that this is the right thing to chop. All I'm saying is that some things will get chopped, given the current funding model. And I regret that the Chair of Finance isn't here either, but not because he's the Chair of Finance. <laughs> <laughs> he may be able to give us some other insight uh, were he here. Um, the, there was reference to other funding agencies, and these were certainly referenced in the meeting we had this morning, ACC, the PHO, the, and we've already mentioned the Community Trust. They all become relevant when we know what kind of capital, or what quantum of capital will be required. So I'd like to finish by just emphasising that this funding is not for capital spending. It is not for <coughs> council to take control, ownership, or anything else. My understanding is that in the long term, the DHB will retain ownership of the facility and the land under it. This funding is simply being loaned to do the necessary investigation in, the, in a necessarily short time frame. And that is it. No commitment to anything else after that. Thank you, Worship. It's just come to my attention, looking at number four, that given that we are a committee recommending to council, we cannot agree to advance a loan. So um, recommend that, in, that council agree to advance a loan, I think be the appropriate wording for this committee. Okay, council of Bounce along. Is everybody clear that about what is up here that we'll it's all of one to six? Um, does anyone wish them to be taken or put separately? If not, I will move all of, I will put all of one to six. All those in favour say aye. Aye. Against, it's carried. Thank you. thank you very much. Thank you very much, Neil, and thank you for coming. So, moving on then to item eight, New Zealand Sea Lion Trust Scotland proposal. Thank you, Chancellor. Thank you. Welcome, Lisa and Mac in disguise. Super. Is there anything, um, Lisa or Pauline, that you would like to just highlight up front? Um, thank you. Um, this report's just bringing back some information um, for the committee to have a discussion around from the, um, the presentation that the Sea Lion Trust um, brought to the, the council at um, the public forum meeting in May. 
So I'm hoping that the, the report provides as much information as you need and I'm happy to answer any questions. Super. Questions? Thank you, Madam Chair. My question is about the five year or the end of that five year period and the potential negotiation or renegotiation of um, ongoing maintenance costs beyond that. Are the trusts prepared to? Uh, are they prepared for the po the possibility that it wouldn't stretch beyond that, and their investment in making this gift may well also have to include in the longer term, well, the ongoing maintenance of it. Through the chair, um, there has been um, quite a lot of discussion with the trust over this. Um, in relation to maintenance and I guess council's financial position at the moment and the trust have been quite um, open and I guess very supportive um, towards trying to get this end result and so that has been part of why they've been prepared to put some money in or fundraise if they need to for any maintenance issues that do come up over the first five years. Um, at this stage they have indicated that um, yes, they are prepared to look at negotiations um, beyond that point but really would like to think that Council can accept this as a gift at some point and take, the, take responsibility over from that. Um, so while it is open for negotiation, um, the Trust would like, I guess, some clear indication from Council. Which as far as I understand we can't do commit to anything in five years' time. So, um, is your question of Lisa in terms of clarifying what is meant by a negotiation in yeah. five years' time? Um, through the chair, I mean, one of the resolutions is that um, the, the sculpture itself is um, accepted as a gift, and so the second part is around um, the maintenance. <coughs> So in, in five, once the, um, the sculpture is installed, it will be an asset of councils. And um, so the long-term viability, I guess, of being able to maintain that, council will bear the cost of um, depreciation of the asset. And um, we're hoping that over this first five years, we will have a good indication of the type of um, where the, the that the materials might have and the type of maintenance that um, are likely to be up for. Um, yeah, I don't know if I can provide any more clarity around that or not. Thanks. Further questions? If not... Well, I'm advised that um, there is a suggestion of an amendment to the second motion. Specifically, that the um, currently open end of payroll costs line is modified, um, and apparently this is the wish of the trust that we, that we so we're moving that we accept the offer by the Sea Lion Trust to pay any maintenance costs up to five hundred dollars per annum for the first five years from the installation of the memorial. It seems to me that sensible. I'm, I recall, as we all do, the, the, the questions about the um, robustness of the construction technique uh, and if that period um, plus some guarantee or commitment from the trust to try and keep on top of any damage or repair that might be necessary over a five, five year period will be fine. If uh, that weren't enough then it would have to come back to us and it would have to be removed or whatever if there were damage. If that were fine then at the end of that period, we make a further decision about the future of the beasts. Um, but I don't think we should look at a gift seal and puff in the mouth. Um, and I think this is an entirely uh, useful contribution to make to the waterfront of St. Clair. So and, and I so move. Thank you. So you're moving one as on the one, and two as, as amended. Two with the amendment. So I would read that the Community and Environment Committee accepts the offer by the Sea Trust 
to pay maintenance costs up to $500 per annum for the first five years from the installation of the memorial. Okay. And given that that's changed, are there any questions about the... The memorial? second is happening. The second is happening. If not, debate. Thank you. 